Okay, we are live, everybody. My name is Bezad. My name is Risa. And we are here from Naked and Famous Denim for the weekly Naked and Famous Denim Raw Denim live stream, the greatest live stream in the history of all of the internet. Welcome. We are checking in from Yokohama, Japan. It is Saturday morning for us mm -hmm. and Friday evening for many of you. We're going to talk about all things raw denim related. You're going to get your weekly dose of raw denim edu. Cation. And we've got Snowy here. Uh, he's just in time. Just in time. The live stream. For, for moral support as well. And uh, let's see where everyone is tuning in from. Then we'll get into today's topics. Uh, but first, Tofu Cobra, happy Friday from sunny California. It's nice to be in a sunny place. It, somebody turned off the lights here in Japan, and uh, it's been gray and gloomy. Yeah, so. we thought we were out of winter. Back to winter again. That, that Mother Nature, she's a, she's a wily one. Uh, Dusty Rad Title, howdy from St. Paul, Minnesota, USA. Welcome, Pure Moreau. Good to see you checking in from Guelph. We've got Canadian Penny. Anyone planning on getting the matcha next week? We're going to talk about the matcha selvage. It's going to be the next release for the Naked Famous Denim Spring Summer 2024 collection. Uh, we've got BD, the producer, is here. Good day. Locked and ready, MIJ10 on the pins. Excellent. Uh, I'm assuming that's what you're wearing. On the pins, I'm not sure what that means, but maybe on, on the legs, pants, I'm not sure. Uh, Andrew Furusawa, hello and happy Friday. Good to see you. David Reyes, Seoul, baby. I'm assuming Seoul, South Korea. Is there other souls in the world? Spelt the same no, way. the spelling. I don't think so. I wonder. I don't know. That's a weird spelling, I always thought. Hmm. Um, Chris, Lauren, hi. Checking in from SoCal, Southern California. Good to see you. Evan, Papa, George, my brother. Love you guys. We love you too. It's good to see you. Invis Ian's DC is in the house. Uh, we've got uh, Michael Waters checking in from Hamilton, Ontario. Home of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The... Great, one of the great teams of the Canadian Football Association, the CFL, for all of you Canadian football fans out there in the world. That's right. All right. No, nothing about it. I have nothing to say. You have nothing to say. Well, that goes without saying. <laughs> uh, Evan Papa George, Toronto baby. That's right. From from the four one six one Puerto. Hey guys, checking in from Greenfield, California. On uh, in the Monterey County, home of the salad bowl. Incredible! That's salad. where they invented the salad bowl. Is it? It must be. Um, but I think around there is like a lettuce capital of the country, or something like that. Perhaps I think is this when you say home of the salad bowl do you literally mean one of those big giant wooden salad bowls or do you mean like it's a football trophy of some sort salad bowl i don't know they have a rose bowl that's true that's true it wouldn't it wouldn't salad catch me off salad just seems like a weird word choice though uh, i don't rose, know rose i get it you know it's yeah nice. right so, somebody educate me on this yeah. i am i'm ignorant to the world of football and sports mostly um all right uh b b b greetings from athens greece recently enjoying the streams each week well thank you Thanks. tuning thank you for tuning in mr b b b from athens greece right w5 hello from birmingham uk good to see you Matteo Donny, hello to snowy from scotland good to see you um Evan says, huge snowstorm right now in Toronto. Oh, oh that well, sucks. stay warm, my friend. Stay warm. Uh, Adam Brown, hail adventurers, gray and gloomy here in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm. Uh, well, I think it's always felt that way ever since the departure of LeBron James. I'm just going to keep ragging on Cleveland for that. Uh, I've never been there. Me neither. I've never been there. Mm. Um,. Christopher Colon writes, it's not sunny in San Francisco, it just started dumping rain. Oh, everybody's having a great Wow, it's all, it's, it's gray and gloomy everywhere. Um, Anthony P, greetings from snowy T.O. Good to see you. That's Toronto. That's Toronto, that's Toronto talk. 
Um, Pedro, uh, current state of fate is in the house. Mike Knight, hey pants peeps from Boyle Heights, Los Angeles. Good to see you. And Dallas Denim Repair, one of the many great Naked and Famous Denim retail partners, is in the house. And they're in the house. Hello from Dallas, Texas. Appropriately named Dallas Denim Repair. I always wondered where they got the name from. No, I didn't. I actually knew it quite. Uh, I think it was quite obvious. But if you need your jeans fixed or repaired, head over to Dallas Denim Repair. They'll, they'll do the job for you. Or they'll get you a great pair of Naked Famous Denim jeans. Uh, Brandon Edwards, hello, good morning. Checking in from L.A., Los Angeles, California. Good to see you. Andrew <coughs> Forgawa, SoCal Gang United. There's a lot of, there's a lot there's of Californians, a lot of Californians in the house. Yeah. Um, one, Doug Under Par, um, writes, most of us have nothing to say about the CFL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, most of the world. I, I think. Except for some Canadians. Yes, there are. Not all. Not all, but. It, hey, you know what? You know, uh, you know, when I was a kid, we'd play football in, in junior high and high school, you know, in uh, gym class and stuff. And we, the teachers would be very, like, we're playing by Canadian rules. What is the Canadian rule? There's one extra down. The ball's a little bigger. Um, and uh, I don't know, something else. But they, they would always be like, or was there one less down? I don't remember what the rules were, <laughs> um, but they were they they always made it a point because I guess when I was growing up, there was always this Canada USA animosity. Like anything Canada does is just better, and uh, I think it, that was probably one sided. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely one sided. Um, but yeah, our teach my gym teachers were very much like, this is the proper way. I'm like, yeah, that's and that's why they have that. That small little beer league called the NFL down in America. <laughs> that's, that's right. Um, anyhow, uh, Norman, uh, sorry, Nomad Crow says, hello from Okinawa. Well, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. We haven't been there in a while. Yeah. We, we, um, we, we were going maybe once a year for a bit. Something like that. A couple weeks yeah. in a row, I yeah. guess, something like that. We, uh, yeah, we, it's, it's not uh, far. Yeah. It's just... You know, sometimes sometimes you need the time. Yeah. You need the time to. Well, relax. last year we traded Okinawa for uh, Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, another Very island. Similar. Another Japanese island. What? No, it's 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 very Japanese in Hawaii. Yeah. It felt like home. Um, Robert, uh, it's it's a beautiful. It's amazing. It's America and Japan all squished together. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of Japanese there, mm-hmm. which is. Good, I guess. I I, I liked it. Uh, Nick Carpenter, Nick from Shot NYC, checking in. Ordered the Ocean's Edge from Blue Owl Workshop today. Nick, thank Thanks. you so much for tuning in. Always a pleasure to have you here with us. Um, Richard Francis, hello from Brussels. Everybody and and Maggie Twenty Four, hello from Germany. Robert, oh, sorry, I can't get you all, but Ro- Robert Weingarten, hello from Texas. Everybody, if I missed you. Juan Puerto says, yeah, it's where most of the salad comes from. Is this correct? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, shout outs to salad. Um, (laughs) Thanks for doing all the good work that you do. Uh, BD writes, Snowy has a fabric. Bezad and Risa, if you could be a fabric, what would it be? Oof, oof, that's a good question. BD with the red that's a good. That's clothes. a good one. Uh, well, Snowy's fabric was quite obvious. Yeah. Um, his pride position, his fur, was mm, featured. Mm-hmm. Not fur, but like the color right, of the fur. Of his, his fur pattern. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm uh, Canadian, Torontonian. Um, what, what? Will you be like a heavyweight? Will you no, be... I wouldn't be a heavyweight then. I'd probably be in like the 14 to 15 ounce range, just a little bit heavier than the norm, mm-hmm. right? I'm not, I'm not basing it on my physical presence. I'm just basing it on, you know, the kind of denim that I like. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's going to be, uh, you know, I'm not particularly patriotic. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Like, I'm not going to be, like, the maple syrup guy. That really doesn't represent me so well. Um, and You're uh, more of a honey guy. Yeah, I like honey. Mm-hmm. But, but 
what, like, you know, would I put the Toronto Maple Leafs colors? I'm not a particularly uh, a hockey fan. Right. So I don't know. That's a very good question. I never thought about that before. If I were to turn myself into a fabric, mm-hmm. would it just be, like, that represented my, my personality? That might take me a little bit of time to think about. Um, a it, complex character. Yeah. Like, if I were to pick a fabric... Maybe I would do Frankenstein, left hand tool, right hand tool. Like, I like a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a lot of, you know, sometimes varied opinions on on topics. So maybe the left hand tool, right hand tool, you know, zigzagging back and forth. Maybe that's a little bit, uh, a little mm-hmm. bit like me. Mm. Yeah, I would do that. I would do some kind of alternating twill. Okay. Um, Americano cotton, because... I like American cotton. Okay. And I like America. Mm Mm-hmm. The great, the great nation. Yeah, the great state of Texas. Um, Hmm. What else would that denim be like? Left hand twill, right hand twill. American Texas short staple cotton. Okay. Give it a little bit of grit. See, gritty. (laughs) Um, And I would indigo warp, natural weft. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, I would do a veg tan leather patch. I would, even though it would, it, look, we're, we're fantasy booking this, so it's going to be selvage. Um, mm-hmm. Color-wise, it's going to be, I don't know. That's a good one. I don't, I, I like, I like things, you know what? I'm going black and gold, because I like black and gold Casio watches. The selvage color? Yeah, black with gold in the middle. Right? This is, I love this color combo. You know why I like this? Because it goes with everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's right. also very, like, nice. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's got this, like, I don't know, kind of like a regal feeling to it. Right. Yeah, so that's it. Bing, yeah. bingity bing. Bingity that's, that's, that's the Bayzad selvage. My college... Um, color was black and gold. So there you go, and it represents Risa also. <laughs> the love. I have of no my idea life. what I would be. I think maybe one thing would be like I want to be natural indigo. I like plants. I like plants driven um, dye. Mm-hmm. I would like to convert that into the denim. Other than that, I don't know. It's a very difficult question, actually. Yeah, maybe some kind of green cast denim mm. with a natural dye. Um, Risa is a plant mama. I'm That's for sure. In training. Um, l- let's look behind her head there. Oh, there you go. There's some of her her prized I possessions. Like to collect plants yeah. and try and keep it alive. Mm-hmm. And possibly propagate. Like, you know, I have all these... Um, I think it really like lit a fire under me with that agave. Yeah, we got an agave because um, we just kind of come across like a good deal one, and you know it's usually very expensive in this country. And you know I just like found a good deal and it's like, oh, this is nice. Yeah, and I bought it, and it came with already like a little babies growing around it, and then from there, like I just kind of learned the the joy of growing little babies and yeah. how like just plants are like that, like children yeah I, I bet people with children disagree will disagree with that, with that one but, yeah you know it's kind of fun right so uh you know what i'm thinking instead of black and gold for my salvage id like not like a little natural brown and gold golden brown okay that's what i would do mm-hmm. like a brown that would kind of match the weft because mm-hmm. i think black in the in, the, in my circumstance, it might be a little off for in terms of the color of like the the, mm-hmm. the overall design of that denim. Mm-hmm. So okay. I would okay. change my mind. Left hand twill, right hand twill, dark indigo. Let's go natural indigo. Natural colored American cotton weft, brown gold selvage ID. That's the base ad denim. Pretty there, handsome. There you go. That's a handsome jean. You know, obviously. obviously. Um, BBB, is there any functional reason in adding rivets on the watch pocket of a jean? Also bought the uh, 15th, uh, sorry, the 150th edition of the 501 
STF shrink to fit and got super disappointed with the fit. All right. Well, I can't speak much on the fit. You know, that's certainly a personal preference. Um, but is there a functional reason for adding rivets on the watch pocket, also known as the coin pocket? Well, the functional reason is that it is very durable. Um, now, in modern times, uh, you could rivet something or you could bar tack something. Bar tacking is uh, very, very strong. Now, bar tackings come in a couple of different forms. You can have like, hold on, let's get a, let's get a pair of jeans. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the origin of the jeans is like, basically you can trace it back to the invention of riveted pants. Yeah. So it's not necessarily like the indigo dial with the white weft, like, although, I mean, it's the, you know, the defin my definition of denim, but it, it may, it jeans, jeans in the pants yeah. is uh, like, it's kind of like the whole point of jeans or like the whole read, like redefinition of pants yeah. as jeans, it was the riveted. Um, um, right, adding rivets yeah. to, that, to that garment. But so this is a bar tack. You'll see it on pretty much any garment you own, but usually you'll have like these thick, like heavily stitched areas. We've got Kirk Gardy, yes. a new subscriber. Welcome to, the, welcome to the family. Okay, so bar tacks. Bar tacks are these very densely stitched areas. You're gonna find it on pretty much any garment you own, uh, jeans of course. Uh, so you'll see it right here, very, very thickly stitched. And this is the machine and it just goes over that area like a gajillion times, very, very quickly. And it reinforces it very strong. Now, this is just like a plain line bar tack. There are actually circle bar tack machines which do it in the pattern of a circle where, uh, you know, like in, in the size and shape of a rivet. Um, rivets provide durability because, of course, you're taking two pieces of steel and you're snapping them together, holding that piece in place. So it's very, very difficult to uh, remove this piece. So it's not just the thread uh, holding it in place. Now, bar tacks are also very, very hard. Like ripping this off is not easy. In fact, when you're like, if and when a belt loop fails, it's not it's because really the stitching came off. Yeah. It's either because the belt loop eventually wore out or like you broke like the fabric out. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice that the bar tack still held on. Do I have a pair here? Is your um, left, left hand 12? Oh. Yeah, Reese is gonna get him. So you'll notice like if the point of failure of a bar tack is like it doesn't break. I mean, it probably can break, but they just don't break. So they're very, very tough. So as far as like the purpose, the purpose of a rivet is to reinforce these high points of strain. That said, in modern times, in modern days, bar tacks can do just a good a job. So. Are they functional? Yes. Are they the only way, the to, only way to do that? it? Yeah, no. So you can do it different ways. Now, cheap jeans wouldn't even bother bar tacking them. Um, I mean, also the stress points, you know, like it's, it's different if you're, you know, if you're not wearing belts, like these are not stress points. You know, yeah. these are, or, you know, pulling your pants with the belt loops, then yeah. these are not stress points. Um, you know, like coin pockets, a lot of people don't even use it. So it's yeah. also not stress points. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, depending on that, what kind of person's wearing that jean, yeah. it's, it's not necessary yeah. because it's like any other, like yeah. any other clothing. Like you don't have to have all these rivets or, or, yeah. uh, bar it, tacks. it's, uh, part of it is also aesthetic and tradition. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Certain areas of jeans generally have rivets on them. Of course, you know, I, it is in many ways, I would say that like if you did a single line bar tack, I'm not saying that's cost cutting, but I mean, you know, I guess it is a way, but it could also just be a design idea. Circle bar tacks are a little bit more, you don't see them as often. No. Uh, they're around, but you just don't see them as often. Kind of weird looking. Yeah. Though. I like them. I really <laughs> like them. 
Just I like them because they're rare. You don't yeah, see yeah, circle bar yeah. tacks very often. I think you only yeah. like them because yeah. of that. It's just... um, and then, so here you go. Here's a, a belt loop. This is my left hand twill. I've had these for forever. I've worn them to destruction. And uh, this is the only belt loop on the jean that that broke. I, I'm not. Sh Anyhow, it it, it it had a good life. Um, but you can see the fabric broke, not the bar tack. That bar tack is still intact. It's still hanging on. It's a very, very tough thing to break. Now, I'm sure I could rip it. No, I don't, I don't even think I could rip it off. I'm, I'm like, I'm trying right now. It ain't coming out. So, anyways, I don't have the greatest grip. Maybe if I had some pliers and a lot of force, but still, that, that's intact. So, Bartex, very strong. Rivets, very strong. Neither one, not very strong. Unless it's a circle bar tack, which is still a bar tack. Um, but good question. Very yeah, good very question. Good question. Um, uh, Tofu Cobra, the Bayzad denim should only be offered in the Bayzad special fit. Mm. I'm going to say no, because I don't think most people can afford that. Right. That's, that's a... Including yourself. Yeah. That's, I, I, don't, I, I don't think I you couldn't can afford, afford it. it. I can't afford it. It's, uh, it's not even a monetary thing. It no, goes no, beyond no. that. So, way uh, beyond that. So uh, I want to make it accessible. If I'm going to make a jean based off of me and my personality, yeah. I want it to be for the people. Um, I'm whereas, a man of the people. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm definitely a man of the people. Um, BD, hmm, maybe I'd be an 18 ounce short staple cotton warp deep dark blue from natural hand dyed indigo brushed natural weft with cotton seed bits still in there and a 32 ounce denim patch. Well, there you go. That's one expensive yeah. denim, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Chock Very full of fancy. details. Um, brushed. Yeah. That's a good. Yeah. Good, brushed in here is always good. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick Carpenter, collector's question. I have 32 pairs of Naked Famous Denim jeans so far, including the MIJ11s. What's, what number have you heard from the collectors? What's the most, what do you consider a collector? Um, I've seen people in, you know, 32 is a lot of pairs. Mm -hmm. I've seen people with pairs in like, 70 80 over 100 you know it it depends when you started with us mm -hmm. i remember very early in the naked and famous denim days there was one customer he used to shop at a store we sold to they they've recently uh they're they're not in business anymore but it was the first store that naked and famous uh sold to called three monkeys it was in montreal and there was a customer there i mean i'm i must have only been working for the company for like a year and a half or very, very, I was still new. Um, and this guy had something like you, like 30 something pairs. And we were only had been around for like two years. This guy was crazy. Uh, anyways, he, he wanted to, uh, he, he, he came to Montreal all the time. Uh, he, he took me to dinner and uh, he was a very, very interesting guy, but he just loved jeans. He wanted every single pair. So there. Pierre Moreau writes, I, I have, have 138. Yeah. There that you is go. a lot. It's a lot. That is almost, yeah. a, if, if it's in different, like, fabrics, yeah. then it's almost like, that, I don't know, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's probably, yeah. like. So, um, so, I've seen big collections. Like, 30 is a big collection. Mm -hmm. 138 is a that big is collection. almost unbelievably yeah. Yeah. big. So, there are folks out there with, considerable uh, amounts of our genes mm -hmm. um, and who do I consider a collector whether you have one pair or you have 200 pairs if you treat it like a collection mm -hmm. then you're a collector right or if you the reason you want a particular pair of gene is beyond more than just the, the you know to, to wear and enjoy on its own yeah maybe you have a like a, a you know, like you, you, you are happy about adding to your pile, then yeah. that's a collection, I feel. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I'm, for example, I have, I don't know, like, I like digital watches, right? I have, I don't know, maybe two dozen or so, maybe not even, um, of them. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's, 
it's a small collection. And then I go on, you know, I'm on the G-Shock forums or whatever and looking up time, old Timex watches. You see people with, like, hundreds of watches. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, there's big collectors, there's small collectors. Like, movies, we have, th- I wouldn't say thousands, but we have, let's put it to you this way, we have close to thousands of movies. And there's people with a collection of 10 or 20 movies, and there's people with collections of, like, 5,000 movies. Like, uh, you know, it, it, it all depends. It, I think it's all based on mentality. Exactly, so, yeah. Um, if you, like, sometimes you kind of, like, feel like, oh, I got to get this because I don't have anything like that in my, you know, in my uh, collection. Yeah. Then that's a, that's a collection. It's it's not like you're getting it because you particularly just would love it, even if it's the first one you see. It's more like uh, comparing to what you already have, and yeah. it's like, oh, this is good addition. Right, and that's a collection. Like we, Reese and I, we collect all kinds of things. We we collect. We uh, do have collector mentality. I yeah. think. Like I'm not really particular. Like I don't. Like I'm not proud. Of, like, being a collector, I don't think I have ever been until, like, maybe, like... When we, we matched up? <laughs> yeah. I just, like, I don't know. I, I, I do have that, though. Mm-hmm. Like, once you, you start to get something, it's like, oh, my God, I have to get this. Right. I'm a, the, currently the, that way about plants. Like, I was just, like, I see a cool plant. And I was like, yeah. I feel like I have to get this. Right. But even, like, sweatshirts and T-shirts, yeah. and th- like, when, when we hit the thrift... Size doesn't really matter to us. Like, I'm not going to, like, I'll buy something. I'm like, I know I'm not wearing this. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know. 100%. Yeah, 100%. It's like, you wa- yeah, that's also yeah. a good indication. Yeah. You're getting it even if you're not, especially with the clothes. Yeah. If, even if you know you're not going to be wearing it so much. Yeah, like, like these, on a daily. these varsity jackets, like, yeah. you know, Risa wore one once or something. Like, they're not going to get... They're not really... They, we didn't buy them to wear them, really. We just bought them because we thought they were really cool. Yeah, I kind of like, wanted to wear them yeah. more. I just need to... They need a little a bit of... Uh, clean it. That's the thing with old clothes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, Pierre says uh, he'll send us a photo. I'd love yeah, to see that, the photo. That, that you might yeah. be in the running for yeah. you're, by far the most. Yeah, you're <laughs> definitely up there. There's no question about that. Um, Christian... Uh, Cologne writes, I only have six pairs of Naked and Famous, but seven pairs of others. Well, there you go, yeah. right? Um, again, you know, uh, Oliver, I have ten pairs. I rotate through mostly Naked and Famous. Fantastic. Um, but, yeah, you know, it, 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 look, collecting is not a sport. It's not something that you have to keep up with. No. Um, you know, and, and, and what I like about, I guess, the current state of collecting is that, you know, we all get to share each other's knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, if this was 20 or 30 years ago, there wasn't a lot of information on any of this. Whatever it is that you're collecting, you know, video games or or comic books or things like that, it was like whatever knowledge you had, you know, maybe even for comic books, was like your local comic book shop or maybe reading Wizard Magazine, right? (laughs) Like, yeah, Wizard (laughs) Magazine. Um, Like, you didn't have the, 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 the... the giga brain of the mass community right. there. So, like, you know, if, you know, I, I used to go on a lot of, like, movie and DVD forums, and, uh, yes, you know, people will be like, oh, I just got this set. This is, like, a, a, a Korean exclusive set. It comes with this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, yeah, I would have never known about this stuff mm-hmm. if it wasn't for you guys. Like, so I do enjoy the fact that, you know, uh... Yeah. Every everyone uh, uh, you know puts all their collective minds and, and interests together, and maybe you'll discover something new because there's so much access to information. Mm-hmm. Nick, Nick Carpenter writes, "I have fifteen hundred and sixty-eight Blu-rays and counting." Ooh, Fantastic! We're, we're, hold on, I'm gonna check. We have yeah. an app that tracks. I'm uh, sure he has too. You must. <laughs> there's use no it. way you know it by yeah. heart. Uh, my movies. It's it's called the My Movies. Uh, app and we're sitting at 1654 movies uh and we just bought like 10 i think it was something like that 10 movies yesterday that i haven't scanned in yet so uh we did we did get a bunch yesterday yeah so it's a, it's a great app and uh yeah I, you can't see it 
Anyhow. Uh, anyhow. Wow, that stinks. Uh, anyhow. It's called My Movies, but you can scan the barcodes of your, uh, your, your discs in, and uh, that way when you're shopping, especially when you have a collection that size, you don't remember what you have anymore. Um, Unless you're, like, genius. Yeah. There's no way. Like, we'll be in the movie store, and it's like, oh, this is a cool, like, set or edition or whatever. I'm like, do we have this? Yeah. And, and that's like, two brains. Yeah. And we don't know. Yeah, I'm like, I we, don't know. We, most of the yeah. time we have it. <laughs> and then right. we just don't know it. And then it's like, okay, I have it on Blu-ray, but do I have it in a steelbook? Or do I have it in a 4K? Is it yeah. worth the upgrade? Like, anyhow, that's, that's, mm-hmm. that's collecting for you. Yeah, it's not, you know, I, I treat the way we collect things unlike, you know, collector i wouldn't call them collectors but like resellers you know people who are oh, out to profit off their collection so, yeah. or like profit off collectors by yeah. they're not collectors yeah they're, they're not collectors i mean to be fair i feel like sometimes people do like among collectors you trade and you know that's how you get you could grow your collection and so i mean just because you resell doesn't mean you're not a collect collector but right yeah yeah Topher Cobra writes, with a movie collection of that size, you could watch a different movie every day for four, four point five years. I hope so, because one day I hope to actually watch all of them. We've probably watched like 30% of the movies that we own. Mm, I don't know. Well, we also sometimes... Maybe a little bit more than that, yeah, but... I don't know. Like we buy, certainly we buy movies that we like, so we've watched them. We've yeah. seen them before, but... But um, also, we watch a lot of things that's not, like, it, hmm. Like, we don't watch from a collection that often. Yeah. Because that's like, okay, I'm sitting down for two hours. Yeah. Sometimes we end up watching movies, but not yeah. necessarily, yeah. like, intending. I, I would say the last year and a half, they're, like, in terms of time, you know, I, I, I like, we just don't have any. So, uh, yeah. it's... as you know, we have... have a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> actually sitting down and watching a m- whole movie is almost impossible for us. Um, I've watched more movies on airplanes in the last two years than I have yeah. sitting at home. I definitely make it a point to watch at least one movie on a flight. Yeah. Just because otherwise I would really not watch anything right. ever all the, all year. Mm. And I can't really say that, like, I enjoy movies at that point. It's like, right. I clearly don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I buy them, and then it's like, I know I'm going to eventually watch this. And that's kind of like, it's like what, it, I guess the digital version of this is like putting something on your Netflix playlist, mm-hmm. and then you never touch it. Mm-hmm. And, like, for me, yeah. there's movies I want to watch, and I'll buy it, and I'm like, okay, now it's on the pile. Yeah. Now, at some point, I certainly need to, like, commit time to doing it, mm-hmm. um, which is not something we've uh, been able to do for the last while, just because our, our lives are a bit hectic. But let's just say that we spend more time looking for movies, like, not particular movies, but, like, looking, you know, going to a thrift store and looking at movie yeah. aisle than watching movies most mm, this yeah. this past couple years that's it which is very like a little tragic yeah Yeah. that said risa and i did make it a particular point to watch a movie last weekend we haven't been to the cinemas since top gun yes that's the last time we saw a movie in the theater maverick not not yeah yeah (laughs) top gun maverick um so i don't know that came out a while ago like maybe almost two years ago at this point year and a half I don't remember. It's I been don't a while. remember. Um, probably two years, yeah, yeah, something like that. But uh, we went to we went to Tokyo, and there was a cinema called uh, sh- uh, one o- a Tokyo Premium Cinema. Yeah, Tokyo Premium is like one o nine. What was one, it? One o nine. Yeah, yeah. We, we pronounce it Tokyo. Oh, okay. Tokyo Premium One o nine Cinema. Anyhow, whatever it was, title wise. Yeah, this was the most much. gorgeous movie theater I've ever seen in my entire life. It was very fancy. Yeah. We only went there. We only found out about it even. Like, I didn't yeah. even know it exists. Um, because they were still, one, still showing Godzilla Minus One. Yeah. 
and two, it was showing with the English, English subtitles. subtitles. Yeah. So there, there was like literally one option that I could find for for that weekend. And uh, it turned out like the ticket of the like movie, yeah, was double. Yeah, what it is in 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 Japan. It's, but it included yeah a lounge access an hour before the movie starts. Yeah. And we're just like, you know, well, just like it's a sitting place. Yeah. We can probably just, you know, get there like, you know, 10, 15 minutes early and just like comfortably sit there, right? No. No. It was not. It was it was a place I want to hang out at. Yeah. <laughs> it, it included... Um, it included uh, free, like, soft drinks. Yeah. Non-alcoholic drinks. And it wasn't even, like, you know, it wasn't, like, two choices. It was, like, a lot. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, and popcorn. Yeah. So that was included. Caramel and salt. You could have anything you want. Um, and then, that, and then also the seat was very luxurious. Yeah. So, it was, like... Going to the movies in first class, uh, like, hold on a second. It Boom. Was, I guess I was just business yeah. class because oh, right. there was a first class. There, there was technically a first class. <laughs> but all the seats are like this. Um, and, like, this is the lounge. And then there's, like, this beautiful view of uh, Shinjuku right here. Um, you can see Godzilla yeah. from there. Because there's a, a giant Godzilla statue on the other building. <laughs> And yeah, just a, a and uh, the sound system was um, developed was made in collaboration with uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto, mm -hmm. who's a, a very famous uh, uh, pianist here. Um, I think he died recently. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, anyway, we had a great time, and I got to see Godzilla minus one. Finally, yes. finally, great movie. I. I uh, but, I had a great time. Yeah. So, like, another thing that was interesting was, like, I, we, 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 we paid for the, like, the regular seat of that cinema, so which is already, like, twice the regular uh, price of a uh, movie ticket. But then there was, like, the three times the regular price of the... Yeah. So, so it's a little more expensive version of that. The cinema, which is like just one single like seat in the middle, obviously like the the best watching position. Yeah, and they had a different lounge, and we didn't get to go in there because we didn't pay yeah. that extra price. Yeah. So I'm just kind yeah. of wondering what it's the, like. Yeah, we had the business class like you know level, mm -hmm. and then there's a first class level right, which exactly. we didn't get to access. But hey, maybe next time. Maybe in a year and a half, we'll see another movie. But it's just like, I like how they're treating, like, how they're allowing us to treat movie watching in the cinema as, like, a, an experience. Like, yeah. a, it, it, it's like a taking a trip, yeah. you know? I, I, I like that idea because, you know, obviously, like, just watching a movie in the theater is an event. Yeah. But, you know, they, they just found a way to, well, charge more, but yeah. also make it more, yeah. like... Like if imagine if that was like a date, yeah, you know, like that's impressive. Yeah, it's nice. It was very nice, very very adult. Um, Magic Twenty Four writes: Are movies in Japan in Japanese? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay. So this, Godzilla minus one is usually we don't have a problem watching movies because we usually watch. English movies with subtitles so that, you know, Japanese people can watch it, but also Beza can understand it. Right. But this was a Japanese movie, so that was a very challenging yeah. because they wouldn't put a subtitle, English subtitle, on the Japanese movie yeah. here. So, hmm. Um, but they did. They actually yeah, did. So. They, 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 they thought of me. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, Canadian Penny writes, when did they start to allow nudity in airplane movies? I don't travel much, so I was surprised last year when I found it in several movies I tried watching. Yeah, they... Was it not allowed before? I don't know if it wasn't allowed, but it does seem... I know that there were, like, airplane edited movies, maybe for language or things like that. I'm not, really? I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, when did they? Because kids can watch it? I guess so. 
Um, kids are not on a plane by themselves. Yeah, but like here, can the penny rights? I had to quickly cover the screen because of my kids sitting, because of the kids sitting behind me. Yeah, it is an awkward situation to have like this romance, you know, or just general nudity on the screen, and there are there are other people and there are kids around. So it does make for an awkward situation. But I'm gonna say this: it might be a controversial take, but I feel like we're just trying to like, you know, like shield kids from these things way too much these days. It's like I don't know. PG thirteen when I was a kid is different than PG thirteen exactly. now. Exactly. I mm. feel like it's and and also kids have a lot easier access to these things already on like. You know, away from, you know, whatever that's that's on the family TV or whatever. So I don't know. I just I I just really feel mm. like that's that's a weird like. I don't know. I don't want to be. I don't want to be the person, you know, broadcasting that with with people around. I you got look. I mean, it's awkward. Yeah, yeah. It's awkward. Yeah, yeah. I, I get. Yeah. I give you yeah. that. But Magi Twenty Four writes maybe Fifty Shades of Grey isn't the best airplane movie in that case. Yeah. Obviously, and I doubt that he was watching that. It, it's probably just like a regular movie with you know yeah. some romantic scenes in yeah. between. But I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Also, I just there was a in the twenty tens. I don't know. Again, I haven't uh, in the twenty tens. There was a lot of like comedies with a lot of like male junk, um, just visible in the movies. Yeah, there was a there was a whole time where there was just like. That was in the movie. It was. It was, it was often in a lot of yeah, Borat and things like that. Just. I mean, the was, was shocking to but, me. I, I, but I, I just kind of feel like there was a little bit more. Was it like in Twenty One Jump Street something happened? Uh, yeah, yeah. I anyway, I don't want to spoil it. Um, <laughs> spoil the, the yeah, movie. Like a ten year. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyhow, I don't know what it is. Um, there's just more debauchery in the world. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I've, I've uh, always felt like the West is way too se- too sensitive for this kind of thing. Mm. Well, they they used to not be, and then they, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But, yeah, PG-13 when I was a kid. You ever watched a movie like Monster Squad? I, I love that movie. But it's like there's just these certain old tropes uh, that would exist in, like, movies for younger people. But also, like... Certainly when we were kids, I mean, I don't know about you, but, like, I was probably 10 years old when I saw Total Recall. Like, like the idea that, like, R-rated movies were just for people over 17, like, I'm like, no. We'd go to the video store and I would pick up Terminator 2 or, you know, whatever it was. And, it, 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 it like, any Van Damme movie, if it had Van Damme or Chuck Norris in it, like, th- those were coming home. It didn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like... I, yeah. Like, I remember... The, the only off-limit area of the video store was the the room with the beads as the right. door. Yeah, that was exactly. it. Don't go in there, and yeah. everything else is free game. 100%. Like, I remember watching <laughs> Mission Impossible, the first one, yeah. with my mom and my sister in the theaters. And then, you know, I didn't really, like... I remember watching it because that was, like, one of the, like, early days of watching like movies for everybody not for kids but yeah. but I didn't really think about it until like I watched it again as a as a, you know a, a grown person and then like I was shocked how much like you know yeah. adult mm. contents were there right. and I just like it's it's a weird now but like I think back when when we were kids it wasn't like yeah. that big of a deal I also remember going to like America as a kid and it was Christmas time and nothing was open, so we went to watch a movie, Toy Story, and like, like it was some kind of a a, a PG thing, like where uh-huh. like you have to be with a parent, and it's like to see Toy Story. I was like, but but it's a kids movie. Yeah, like mm. I was just very confused. Mm. Uh... Vitaly writes, am I the only one that feels like your mom would enter your room during the only 30 seconds of nudity <laughs> in the action movie? Yes, moms are, they're, they're, there's radar for that. <laughs> they know. They just come knocking. What's going on here? No, nothing. Nothing is going on here. Just watching the Care Bears. Yeah. Um, 
I remember going to see movies. Uh, I remember going to see, going to the movies to watch Rambo and being told I couldn't since I wasn't 18. That's, yeah. Rambo was 18. Rambo must have been, yeah. Wow. Rambo rated R. Like, I definitely watched that as a child. Right. I watched Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, all as a child, like, first, second grade. Like, The yeah. only, like, main... I, to be fair, like, I couldn't imagine, like... I don't know, when I see a first grader now or a second grader nowadays, I'm like, I'm not going to be the guy who's like, yeah, here's Friday the 13th. Like, you know what I mean? I just, I don't know. Maybe kids were a little tougher back then, but I just could not we imagine not... handing a child that movie and being like, yeah, this is appropriate. I guess so. I don't know. I think yeah. we were more, more like, we're now as a society more, like, like just concerned aware. about yeah. kids. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not like they were recommending these movies to, to kids right. back in the day. No, no, they were, just... because they would make cartoon shows about them. That's they would true. make RoboCop the cartoon. They would make Term- but, but not that... Terminator. They made Rambo the cartoon. It's because like... kids already liked it. Yeah. It wasn't like, okay, like, oh, right. let me introduce you yeah. to this. I guess that there was a little bit of that. But... Toxic Avenger had its own cartoon. Like, you know, yeah. it's it's... It's precisely because there was a child fan base for that pr- property that they're like, yeah, let's make but, a cartoon show of it. But to me, like, a weird yeah. thing in in America is that they do rate very strictly movies, mm. but then they do something like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, if, like, in Japan, like, there wasn't any, like, R-rated mainstream movies up until Battle Royale. Uh, I remember that distinctly really because it was like, how can you have like a, such a big like promoted movie that that kids can't see? Like that. Yeah. Oh no, kids, that was the first like, R eighteen movie here, or like big. Like I think I was sixteen, but it was like one it. one that was like really like really introduced me to the idea that I as a teenager I still cannot access like the same movies as adults I don't know I, just, I, I don't know what I'm saying but I, I remember that really distinctly it's like but there's like Takeshi Kitano in this yeah. <laughs> how can I not watch it this is one of my favorite movies and I had I watched this in high school probably was too young uh, according to the rating but uh no, 16, I think. Was, was it 16? Okay. I think it was 16. Okay, yeah. I was probably, I guess, old I think enough I was around that yeah. age, actually. But yeah, this is a great movie. Great movie. You should all watch it. The first one's good. The second one, I don't know. Uh, but the first one is fantastic. Um, I don't think I've even seen the second one. Don't waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> it came. It comes in the set, but uh, I don't think I've ever put that in the, in the player. I just wanted the box. I already had other Battle Royale sets. Is it a sequel? Yeah, it's a sequel. It's the same characters? No. Different characters. Um, Anyhow, yeah. Cobbler Online writes Alien Toys. Yeah, they made toys for Alien. Alien? Alien. Yeah, that's a scary movie for a kid. That's that's an R-rated movie. Yeah, but it's not like uh, sexy. No, but there's a lot. Anyhow, blood and guts and violence. Yeah, Alien um, coming out of your belly button was a very traumatic, right. traumatic scene. Um, Albert uh, Valencia, uh, Battle Royale was awesome. Sadly, it was banned in America for some years. Banned? Like, not... Was it, was it banned? No. I guess. I mean, this is a movie about, uh, I think, what grade are they in? No, um, they're eight. like, I think, last senior year of uh, middle school. So, so like, they eighth will be grade? like... Um, 15, 16, 15, 16 years old. Okay. Yeah. And, it, like that. and they're all just shoved on an island, and they're like, uh, the last one of you to survive lives. And then you just watch how everything breaks down from there. Uh, so it's a very, like, crazy idea. Um, and, uh, yeah. Oh, it was 2000, so I was 14. You were 14 yeah. when that movie came out. Mm. Uh, okay, I saw the original Alien in theater when I was in seventh grade. Also, Apocalypse Now in the same year, right? Christopher Cologne. Yeah, I think when we were when we were kids, things were definitely a lot different. Um, Mike, if if I could do another like the the horror denim, 
I, I, I want to do Alien. I want to yeah. do Alien so bad. Yeah. Um, it, it's such a good... Yeah. Because it brings transition. in the sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, so we can go... Like, we do all the horror stuff. And there's still, still a lot of horror to do. But, like, it brings in the sci-fi world. And maybe we can expand a little bit more sci-fi from there. But just the the... the the aliens as a denim. Oh my god, it's gonna. It, anyway, one day we'll make it happen. Um, uh, Mike Drop thirty seven. Hey Bayzat, I had the zipper on my midnight slub selvage midnight slub stretch selvage come off after only two weeks of wear. How can I fix it? It depends on how it's broken. Uh, I, if I saw it, I could give you better advice. Um, something, it might be something you could fix yourself or, uh, the tailor shop, or it might have to be replaced completely. Send us an email and we can, uh, we can take care of that for you. Um, C. Sanchez, Hunger Games stole the whole idea from Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there was a a couple of movies. There was a movie, I forget what it was, um, that came out not too long after Battle Royale in the West, and I, I, it had Stone Cold Steve Austin, and it was like it was basically the same premise, but with like prisoners, mm. and like I guess the idea is like, well, if this, like you know, in the like we couldn't make you know ninth or tenth graders killing each other in a movie in the West. That's just not, you know, that that's too hot a topic. I guess to to make a movie about so throw yeah. some prisoners in there. But that you move, know, that would be that would be fine to make. What's great about mm-hmm. Battle Royale is though that they're young and that That's why it's so shocking. It yeah. it's so shocking but it's also like it builds the whole entire thing about, you know, friendship and like, yeah. you know, you know, em- emotional turmoil as a teenager and stuff like that and mm-hmm. i think without that it's just a right. violent movie right yeah it's not it is definitely about it is a movie about friendship yeah yeah and and and, 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 and like, more pure friendship than you know like adult friendship not not to say that adult friendship cannot be pure it's yeah. just like it's a little bit less of like mm. you know i don't know it, it's not a choice that you you go to school every day with with bunch of people you know right mm. anyhow go and watch it mm. it's a good movie um uh okay um okay i'm not gonna uh, uh, albert uh, throws a little spoiler out there anyways ignore albert's last comment if you haven't watched the movie um uh okay <laughs> There's a lot of lot of movie it's talk. It's also yeah. what a twenty four year old twenty four year old so. movie. But some people may not have seen it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, I'm certain people in this crowd have definitely. But uh, you know, it is a foreign film, so um, maybe not too many people have saw, seen it. Um, okay, uh, as you guys know, we love movies, and that's why we do uh, all kinds of movie type collaborations. Uh, as you know, we do have uh, Halloween in the works so that is scheduled to be coming out this fall um so you know just a nice segue into that and then of course we are working on trying to secure the monster the monster the mo- we're just going to refer to him as the monster right now infant fan nice. joined the family here we go um welcome to the naked and famous down live stream world um so we're just going to refer to the next property as the monster uh, for now until we get everything signed, sealed, and delivered. Um, I have already planned it out. It's all on paper. So once we get uh, the okay from uh, the big bosses, um, we're gonna get we're gonna start moving into fabric development, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to. This is scheduled for a fall 25 release. That would be the uh, the, the landing date of that. So um, we'll, uh, we'll see where that goes and we'll certainly keep you updated with all of the progress as we make progress. Um, Stephen Copelcam writes, is that the monster? 
That is the monster. So in the chat, that's the monster we're referring to. Um, Post Lico writes, I have too many pairs of raw denim as is, but would love to be able to trade something in towards a flannel shirt or jacket or something. Um, well, the best way to handle that, if you have faded pairs, then we do take things in on a uh, trade-in basis for faded worn in pairs. But if they're maybe new or something that you just haven't enjoyed uh, as much as you'd like to, uh, consider trading them, swapping them, selling them on the different forums. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's there's uh, uh, the raw denim subreddit. There's always a buy sell trade group there. eBay, I think, is a pretty hot bed for. Um, you could find some naked famous de denim deals there for sure. Um, there's other like I'm not sure what they are, but I'm, I know that there are like those kind of trading buy sell trade clothing apps uh, available in America. I'm presuming that you're in America, um, and uh, try to get you can you could get a good decent amount uh, for uh, for some gently worn or even sometimes very worn stuff uh, on you know those marketplaces. So. Consider that. Um, yeah. and but, but just to add to that, like our trading programs is not like you have to trade, you have to get a new pair of jeans. It, it's that you, you if, if it's faded enough and then we want to take it as a faded uh, pair, we'll take it and we'll give you, uh, what's, what's It's 20% off 20 on, percent. like, yeah, usually we say on your next pair, but if you want a flannel shirt, yeah, we'll, you can, we can. You can also get a 20% yeah. off on that. You don't have so, to get a jean. Yeah. Um, okay, um, Albert writes, my bad, just because it's old doesn't mean everyone has watched it. Uh, that, yeah, that's it. Anyhow, no, 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 we're not, no shame in that game. It's okay. No problem. Um, Shang Style, I've seen other Japanese brands do collabs with The Monster, so they must be easy to work with given previous Japanese collabs. Um, in, like, licensing works differently in Japan and outside of Japan. In different countries, yeah, yeah. it's different. Usually, Europe is a different, you know, market yeah, too. Yeah, like the monster in Japan is licensed out to all kinds of things. Yeah, like you, there's curry, there's there's bath <laughs> towels, there's like everything, everything you can imagine. There is product with that character mm -hmm. on it. So the licensing here is different, and certainly those products are not they're not to be sold outside of Japan. Um, so every region has its own rules and then the way that they treat those properties. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's just how that works. Um, um, the Raven, will suspender rivets be an option at any point? I saw the recent this week at Tate and Yoko, and after seeing Terry's canvas pants, I thought they looked cool. Um, I'm going to tell you the same thing I told Terry when he did it. So the way he had it done was he had some buttons, so like the normal waist button, put in the waistband so that he could wear suspenders with it. I told him, not a good idea, because if you put waist buttons in the waistband, you can only wear suspenders with that. And in fact, if you take the suspenders off, it's going to be weird to wear because that metal piece kind of it sticks out too much. What you really want to do is sew in some buttons. So you could take any buttons. You can go to your local, uh, you know, fabric store. They sell buttons. Whatever buttons you like. They might even have little metal buttons. Sew them in. And that way they're kind of flat on the waistband. And if you want to wear a belt, you want to wear it without a belt and just a t-shirt on top. You don't have these metal pieces jutting out. Um, so I would recommend you just handle it yourself. Um, and, you know, if you're handy with a needle and thread, you're going to be able to do it no problem. And if you're not handy with a needle and thread, after a seven or eight minute tutorial that you watch on YouTube, you will be and you're going to know how to sew in buttons. It's not hard. Um, oh, you can just take it to your mom. And mom it mom you. knows. Um, if you have an Italian Nona, they also <laughs> know very well as well. Um, so... Uh, that's what I would recommend if you want to put suspender buttons in your jeans. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, Albert uh, writes, uh, my craziest product was Pokemon Ramen. Yeah. The, the, the Pokemon brand here is also used in 
practically everything. <laughs> yeah, you, you would, in fact, have a hard time not finding Pokemon product in Japan. Mm, if, yeah. if there was, like, a challenge where it was, like, buy every Pokemon product that you see, you would be broke in, in seconds. Day. Yeah. Yeah, it would not take you very long. There's Pokemon stuff absolutely everywhere. Oh, well, Japan likes those things, yeah. characters. I mean, yeah. you know, Hello Kitty oh, was... Right. was yeah. But they're here for a reason. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you'd be surprised with the kinds of products that you would find um, with, like, licensed characters that you certainly wouldn't find uh, in the West. Or maybe if you did, it would be a bigger event, you know? Um, Pantene Pro V times Pokemon, you know? <laughs> like, it would be a big old... It would be a national That's campaign. True. Whereas, like, here, it's like you'll go into, like, the, you know... The, you go the, into a drugstore, like yeah. go into like the dental section, and you can find Pokemon uh, toothpaste, yeah. so toothbrush, or like any kind of big yeah. characters you can probably find it, like a Disney. Yeah, or... they'll they'll have like some kind of you know the regular shampoo, but it'll have like a Disney character on it just cause, and like they're just like yeah, you know. There's a lot of random yeah. stuff that yeah. doesn't need the character. But, but, it, but it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, a junior wrote, wrote, I found bath bombs of Pikmin on my last visit. Yeah. Oh, like we... We, we found... We found We some, found so many good yeah. bath yeah, bomb from, or uh, bath products. Yeah. Our nieces and nephews were just buying them some, like, you know, care package stuff. And we found all these character bath mm. bombs. And uh, I was like, I hope they take bath and not just showers because this is, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get excited about those things. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so cool. Uh, they're very intricate here. And like, they also, like I, I didn't know the category of, of this existed, but it's like a toy bomb. Yeah. Like you put it in, you put it's a like bath a, bomb in the yeah. thing, but it's like a gotcha. Yeah. You know, or like a oh, like kinder, a kinder surprise, kinder yeah. egg. Yeah. So, or, like, you, you, you don't know which toy. Like, there's, like, four or five, you know, varieties. Yeah. And then you don't know which toy you get until you put it in the bath and yeah. let it, you know. But it's kind of a up. good idea because, you know, sometimes kids, they don't like taking baths. But it's, like, you have to in order for this to dissolve <laughs> and wait for the toy to come. Yeah. So it's kind of encouraging. It's a very nice, uh, nice product. Um, okay. Um, uh yeah, a lot of a, a, a little a little off topics today, but baths are a great great way to wash your jeans. Also, uh, if you ever sit in the, I'm just segueing it. This is I'm keeping it all raw that I'm related, guys. Mm -hmm. Have you ever sat in the bathtub with your raw denim jeans? This guy has. <laughs> I have. Uh, I've done it m a few times. Mm -hmm. When I was really when I was starting in the raw denim game, um, you know. You're, you're reading stuff, you're learning stuff. Oh, uh, the raw denim guys, they take showers with their jeans. And I'm like, I'm a raw denim guy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take a shower with my jeans. And so I remember doing that for the first time and, like, you know, getting the soap and, like, scrubbing it in and, like, rubbing your jeans down. And I'm like, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> thought, I thought it was okay. I thought, you know, to me it's kind of like um, – after the experience, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do this all the time. It mm -hmm. just seems like... Wait, was it like an unsumphorized? No. Like shrink to fit just, just, kind of Just thing, my, so? my regular daily okay. jeans. And I'm just like... Just to... Just to wash them. Just to get the starch out and stuff? Or just to wash them? Yeah, just to wash them. After you wash them. Yeah. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, this seems like... <laughs> Unnecessary. Yeah, and I'm not getting clean, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then I remember doing the unsand fry sit in the tub soak i'm like this maybe i convinced myself back then that that worked mm. right but it's like the jeans are just shrink as much as they're going to shrink they don't just like shrink to your body and then stop mm -hmm. right because the jeans are just going to shrink to whatever they're going to shrink so you know you get your your new crispy raw pair of jeans you're sitting in the bathtub all right, you're watching that water get a little bit yellowy, you know, mm -hmm. that color yeah. it turns. Dirty um, color. Really. No, it's not dirt because they're still brand a, new. Yeah, but, but it's the dirty color. Like it's yeah, not, yeah, the it's, dirt. it doesn't yeah, yeah. feel good to look at the water and it's yeah. like, ugh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's getting that, that tinge. Yeah. And it's not attractive. Uh, and then, 
you know, you get out of the tub, and then you just hang the jeans to dry, and then they shrink. And they're like, oh, yeah, they fit great. I'm like, yeah, but they, they probably would have did this <laughs> if I just soaked them, you know? I don't think sitting in the bathtub was uh, a necessary part of this. Um, I mean, it looks yeah. cool when you see it, an illustration where the guy's, like, you know, taking a yeah, shower yeah. and just sitting in the bath yeah. and then, like, lying in the yeah. sun to dry. Yeah. And it's like, it just it sounds like a fun right. thing, but it just, it takes so long. Yeah. And it's, not, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's not, like, not that I, hmm, how can I say it? I don't want to uh, ruin these experiences because mm-hmm. some people are going to try it. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I don't. Maybe I already ruined it for you. But, uh, you know, that's kind of the part, fun part of the raw denim journey is that there's a lot of mysticism here. And, um, you know, some of it is nonsense. Some of it is some. I mean, I, the mist. I don't know. What is. Oh, there's a lot that's true. But I'm just thinking, like, to all these, like, oh, the raw denim guys do this. And the raw denim guys never wash their jeans. And it's like, maybe there's some truth in it. Oh, the raw denim guys shower in their jeans. I'm like. I guess I did, so yeah. you know. But what what ha- you know what inevitably happened to them isn't like something I would go and recommend. You know, go out and try it. You know, it's not going to hurt your jeans. It's like you know going to the beach and doing an ocean soak. Like an ocean soak doesn't unless you want what what an ocean soak is going to do is that your jeans are going to smell like the ocean mm-hmm. and the. For me, the real benefit of that ocean soak is when you go into the into the water, and then you get the sand, and you start rubbing the sand into the jeans, and like you know the 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 tide is like washing the sand away, and so you're kind of abrasing the jeans yeah. at like your stress points because you know you're sitting in them, you're wearing them, and so you know where where your creases fall, like that's where you're kind of rubbing in the jeans, so it's it kind of accelerates. Some fading because you're abrasing the jeans. Yeah. Well, the, like, um, wait, I'm, I'm barking on a word. Like, the, um, the, the process of, of, you know, uh, making the jean, brand new jean look worn in, um, dis, di, distressing? Yeah, distressing. Distressing the jean is literally that, but. You know, with a machine and not in the ocean. Yeah. They, but, they, they but, put sand, it's literally called sand. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you put either sandpaper or blast yeah, the sand yeah. into the fabric. It's, it's, so basically, you're doing that manually by hand. Yeah. But, but the difference yeah. is when they do it at the factory, there's a plate. There's yeah, a template, exactly. yeah. right? And when you do it at the beach, it's you. So, like, those fades, those creases, those lines are your fades, creases, and lines. And you're just enhancing yeah. them a little bit. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that, that's my point. It's just that you're, you're enhancing mm-hmm. yeah. it. And you're just, yeah. that, that's exactly how you do it. Yeah. Even at the factory, right. you can do it now, manually. Now, too. so in that respect, I don't not recommend a beach soak. I, I Like, I don't. Like, unlike, like, sitting in your bathtub and, like, waiting for your jeans to shrink on you, like, I don't think that does anything, right? Is it an experience? Sure. Give it a shot. You know, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt you. But, or, like, putting your jeans in the freezer. Oh, yeah, your jeans in the freezer are going to clean your jeans. I'm like, they're going to make your jeans cold. They're not going to clean your jeans. Your jeans is going to stink, right? Um, you know, if you've got dirty jeans, just wash them. Don't put them in your freezer where your food is. It's just, yes. don't, don't do it. Or do it, whatever. Do whatever you want. They're your jeans. But the ocean soak does accelerate fades a little bit. It definitely does. Um, and that's because of the sand and not, 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 so, much the, uh, not so much the water. Um, and then after that, you're going to have to actually wash your jeans uh, because... Otherwise, it would just be a crispy, salty yeah. piece of fabric. And there's sand everywhere still. Like, you can't get all that sand out. Like, yeah. it just, it will never come out. Sand yeah. is... Just, Everybody yeah. knows that. Yeah. You, you go to the ocean and your bathing suit has sand forever. Right. It's, it's never going to be, like, a brand new bathing suit again. Right. Um, Kevin Gill with the question, Hey, Bazan, after picking up, picking up all the denim jeans I need, I am now contemplating getting the Heritage Selvage Cap. How <laughs> will it fade? And do they ever go on sale? Well, I'm going to answer both of those. Uh, 
How does it fade? This is raw. This is washed and faded. So like not all the way faded. I you know I don't wear it every day, but I have put some considerable wear in it. You can see you know the brim is fading nicely. So this is what you can expect um, with time compared to raw. Sometime obviously if you wear it more than I do, then you're going to fade it more than I did. Um, so they do fade. And uh, as far as sale, we are going to have a Easter sale coming up. Um, and that will be starting on just, I'm not going to make it one of those like surprise, you know, the price, you know, in the past, what I would do for the live stream audience is I would, uh, and this is going to happen when we do like Black Friday and stuff. But what I would normally do on like a secret sale is I would mark everything down, but I wouldn't like flip the website to indicate that a sale was going on and it was just a wink between me and you guys that like the prices are lower, mm -hmm. right? But what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna on Wednesday make an announcement that we have our Easter sale going on and it's gonna start on the 27th of March. And uh, what here's what you can expect. Um, we will have some further markdowns on already sale items. So it's things that are already in the sale section. So let's let's just go over to Tate and Yoko right now, uh, and uh, I'll uh, I'll give you an idea of what's going to happen. So here we go, here we go, um, here we go. Uh, a little Mario sixty four for you all. Um, so our sale section: twenty percent off, forty percent off, sixty percent off. So that's how our our, our markdowns work. Um, so what you're going to see is like you know things that are currently twenty percent off. Some of these items. And usually it depends on like availability and, and things like that. But some of these items might end up in the next markdown range. And then during the sale, I'm going to mark it down even further. So um, you'll see a little bit of a further discount from 40% off. So items that are currently 20 will end up in the second markdown and then get marked down a little bit more. And then after the sale is gone, it'll go back to 40% off. So some items are going to move around. So current the current items that are on sale, not all of them, but many of them are going to move around a little bit. Um, items that are not on sale yet. So, you know, there might be some older uh, seasonal items that maybe you've had your eye on. We might start to be selling down on them and uh, they need to, you know, we need to have a little price uh, encouragement uh, for those last items to move. So those are some, some current regular price items are going to move into the sale category as well. And I will throw some hats in there. So if you're looking for a hat, wait until the 27th and uh, you you will uh, you'll be surprised. Um, or, or you won't be surprised because you now <laughs> already know about it. And just think, if you are a size 28, Buy, buy some buy some of our jeans um, because we have there's there's 28s 29s or if you're a 29 or if you're a 28 also buy a 29 they'll fit you'll grow into them one day you're not gonna be a 28 forever um, yeah just sizing wise there's a lot of uh, small, small sizes, sizes hanging around yeah. although that's a good size in that mm. in that jean there um, also like you know Terry has been finding some treasures in the warehouse it seems yeah so there's like a lot of when, you know, styles that we hadn't seen in in years. <laughs> yeah, so they're uh, randomly old styles are popping up on the website. So uh, I guess ever since they found those jackets, they've been going through the warehouse with like a fine tooth comb and just finding random things. Yeah. So sometimes some like some extra sizes will pop up in like a style that we might have only had like one of left. Um, so yeah. just just well, be aware of that. So. Every now and then, check our website. S scour through it. Here's a, yeah. here's a, here's a tip. Um, like you know, naked and famous. Go to view all. Um, there's a couple of ways to like filter down the collections. But if you go from like old to new, you might find some old things yeah, hanging around. Yeah, you see a lot of the, yeah. the core first. Yeah. But then after the core is done, it's like oh. I haven't this seen that in a bit. Yeah. Back. I mean, like we, you know, like uh, there was a lot of sold out in Jojo, but some of them came back too. Like we we have a little bit more of Jojo now than we did like right after. Yeah, like know. 32s? Yeah. Wowzies. 
So Wowzy. it's like if you've yeah. been looking for something, and even if they they have the product has been taken off the website, you know, a while ago, it's just you know every now and then check back because we yeah. might find some treasures. Yeah, like it's always a possibility. Yeah, those were sold out for all of this was sold out for a while. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, and then they've been back for a while. Like just yeah. people are not finding. <laughs> right. So anyhow, scour the website. You ne you never know what you find. Um, and those random finds will not go into latest arrivals because they're not like new products. So, right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess be aware of that. I'm trying to see here because I remember last season, maybe they're finding some stock here and there too. Like, I remember the green cast was sold out, so maybe they found something. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, every now and then they find a little bit of inventory hanging around, uh, which I wish they would have found it earlier. But hey, you know what? Better late than never mm -hmm. um so do that I, another pro tip just just a pro tip from bayzad um if you want some great deals the, the easy shirts no it's easy guy there's a lot of easy shirts that we might have some stock in like there's a lot of great summer items and like these are going to get marked down a little bit more next week so take advantage these cotton silk blend shirts mm -hmm. are Amazing. Yeah. They wash down. They get super. They get. They're very slubby to begin with. Maybe it's hard to see, but very nappy yeah. to begin with. So it's like you wash it and it even like becomes nappy and then it becomes this like vintage looking, you know, yeah. like really nice character fabric. Yeah, it's beautiful. They're comfortable. It just it's and you can just wear it like on top of a t-shirt, rolled yeah. up sleeve. That's what that's for. And it's not very too thin. Yeah. It, it's it's a very good Th That's a real winner over shirt. This one also sizing is a little, you know, if you're if you're a smaller bodied person, this is a great shirt. It's super thick. I have this shirt. I love this shirt. It's a, just a beefy beefy flannel. And I know we're getting into the summer. Uh so Maybe you won't get as much wear of it, it but that's but that's what, how you get the best. That's deals. how you get the best deals. Yeah, and like you know, it, it makes for a good like light jacket in the evening time, or yeah. you know, if you're if you're out in the if you're camping or you're out uh, by the beach at night, like it's it's going to be a very very nice shirt to wear. Um, same thing with this flannel. I have that one. If you're small, small. Nice oh right, yeah, it's the same fabric. Yeah. Um, and this one too. This one is great. Very, this is the same as the other one I was just showing, uh, just in the different color. Super nice yeah, to wear. Beefy. Just really a beefy. very thick, yeah. heavy, uh, comfortable flannel. So check those out. Check those out. There's a lot of deals to be had. So starting on the 27th, you're going to be able to uh, score even more deals. Uh, now, if you don't want to wait, grab something today. You know, secure your size. But uh, once that sale starts, once the sale gets announced in the email... It, we will have a. There will be a flood. There will be a flood of people. So be there. Oh, here. Okay. Here's the. Here's the one pro tip. Because I'm working in Japan time. Likely those sale prices are going to be active like sometime like early morning, like three, four, five a.m. Uh, Eastern time ish. Like I don't. Ha I didn't like have a set time when uh, any of this is happening. I'm just you know working through changing prices uh, on the back end uh, just during my work day. So. If you're up, if you're if you're on the West Coast, you know maybe it's around midnight your time, one a.m. your time. Check the website. You might find that there's some 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 really good deals uh, at that hour. So a uh, couple of pro tips. I know that there's a, a lot of people from California in the chat right now. Um, Magic Twenty Four writes: Is there a naked and famous denim jeans that doesn't fade? I love the fades, but I also love clean. Indigo blue, a clean pair of, of plain indigo blue. Yeah, well, we have a perfect answer for you uh, coming this fall. Yep. We, we call this a forever blue salvage. So yep. it's it's a it's a 12 fonts, 13 ounce, something like that. Regular yep. weight, dark indigo jeans. It looks like any other jeans, but it the 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 idea is the warp is not dyed with actual indigo. It's dyed with a reactive dye that looks like the, it's in, in the indigo color, yeah. but it's not indigo. So it doesn't fade as much. You know, just like any dye, it 
it's not a permanent permanent dye that stays like wash after wash the same color but it's like any other piece of like you know dark t-shirt or like you know shirt or anything like that 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 you know over wash you will see some fading but you you don't see like a fading like jeans does it's it's not gonna be uh it's not gonna be a, like you wear it for you know a month and you see like you know yeah. the crease marks or anything yeah. like that so this is really designed for people who yeah. are like who want to keep the jeans as yeah. dark as possible. They're they're very resistant to fading. So it's not to say that they're impossible like impossible to fade. Yeah, it's just just, just like yeah. think of yeah, any yeah. other dark colored clothing that you have that is not jeans. Yeah. You know? Right. They they tend to stay dark, yeah. right? But you know, there might be some like gradual fading like a like a black t-shirt you know your black t-shirt kind of fades a little bit to gray but it fades uniformly right so it's the same thing with these uh forever blue selvage that'll be coming out in the fall uh yeah we know that there's been we've had jeans like this in the past uh and like every now and then people ask for it so you know we're happy to bring it back uh i think it'll be a more regular reappearing mm -hmm. jean uh, uh as we go um uh, Poo Yish, uh, Payish, sorry, Payish uh, writes, will groovy guys and strong guys be on sale? Um, not the core ones. Mm. Uh, if there's any seasonal ones, I know there's no seasonal groovy guys, but there might be some seasonal strong guys out there. Maybe. I don't remember. I... Um, chances are no. I'm going to say chances are no. Mm. Um, but check anyways. Um, Junior writes, I got the holographic jacket the other day. Nice. Good. Good. I hope you're That's enjoying it. Instantly. Yeah. yeah. Very went very fast. There wasn't too many of them, but uh, I'm glad you got it. Hopefully, you have uh, a fun place to enjoy that jacket. Um, are the Naked and Famous shirts a slim fit? I wouldn't consider them a slim fit. Um, not, not the easy not the easy shirt. shirt. Yeah. And like the, our past Naked and Famous yeah. shirts have been slim. relatively slimmy. Yeah. Slim. Slimmy. Slim. Yeah. But. Easy shirt is more boxier. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, and there's also a pleat in the back that opens up so you can move nicely. Uh, I would not consider them particularly slim. In the past, yeah, early naked and famous denim days, and I would say like you know that 2010 hipster era like button down like shirt, all of those shirts were slim. They were. Well, they had yeah. this, we had the slim shirt yeah. which had the darts, darts in the back. In the back. Yeah. And we also had regular shirt, which was also slim fitting. Yeah. Like it was not like a, a, a yeah, a, you know, roomy yeah. shirt or uh, anything. Uh, the first shirt that we made was called Slim Shirt. Yeah, and I used to wear an extra small. I wear a medium in the easy shirt these days. But also, it's just like it was so everybody was wearing clothes so yeah. close to and their everything skin. Everything was so tight. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was no breathing room back then. It was just like. <sighs> Okay, I look cool. Just uh, got to put on a bow tie and uh, <laughs> and and a cardigan. We're ready to go and my fedora. Um, all right. Uh, I picked up uh, a soul refined race. I picked up that blue owl collab. I was uh, just explaining to my mom what slub was. LMAO. There you go. You know, yesterday, Reese and I, we were uh, getting off the metro. And as we were walking off, I, we noticed a guy wearing some slubby jeans. And, like, you know, Risa, as I'm, as I'm looking at this guy's jeans, Risa says to me, those are some slubby jeans. And I'm like, that's exactly, I'm like, it's just like our eyes <laughs> immediately, without saying anything, we're just like. Because it's not it. yeah, so yeah. common, yeah, especially, yeah. like, yeah. You like, might see raw denim, or, like, rather dark indigo selvage jeans. You're like, you see him kind of a lot because that's. Yeah, or like even salvage jeans that's worn in by some, yeah. you know, like by somebody. Like a clean pair of raw jeans or like worn in version of that is is pretty common to see. But slubby jeans is yeah. very not yeah. common to you see. You don't see it very much. So yeah, we both were like, hmm, there you go. <laughs> um, you know, you know, the other day, uh, uh, somebody on Instagram messaged me with uh i guess they were at the thrift and they found some premium denim options and they're 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 just showing me and it's like it's ama it's amazing because once you've kind of you're around nice denim long enough and you know what it feels like if you go to the thrift and you start like you know just finger going through the rack you can tell the good gene right away 
Like I can do this so easily now. You don't like, even have to yeah. touch it. Yeah. So. I don't you, right. You, I don't you, I can you, see you it. Can see like it. I look yeah. I look through the pile I'm like that's a good pair and I pull it out and like 90% of the time it's like, you know, a a, a, pr a premium like, you know, in our world, our space denim option. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, cool. It's like n nice to find these things out there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of it's kind of neat as you I mean, uh, can develop that skill. Look at and yeah. touch. So. Um, all right. Uh, but oh, now maybe your mom can figure out who's wearing slubby jeans. That's it. Um, uh, Owen writes almost six months in my Elephant Twelves weird guy daily wear fading great well i'm glad that you're enjoying them i hope they're coming along uh well show us some photos mm. tag us post them up on the gram we'll we'll try to you know i i, I say that but i haven't been on the gram as uh aggressively as i used to be uh, i need to share photos more and uh yeah community sharing is is a good content it's yeah like it's you know obviously it's easy um to yeah. repost something then create a pause but also i feel like that's something that like people enjoy seeing like yeah they know what a brand new jean looks like yeah. you know we, we have plenty of photos but fade in in real life photos are very um, fun yeah. to watch and you get to see how see. how different people style and wear their jeans mm -hmm. so i think i think that it's too. a great thing um you know what i think is a great thing liking this video have you ever got, have you guys taken the time to think about liking this video? Well, if you haven't, now is the time to consider that. And by consider it, I'm asking you, just hit that like button. Do it for me. And if not for me, maybe you're the one guy who hates our videos every week. Do it for Risa, right? Whatever beef you have with me, that's fine. <laughs> they don't like this video. No, they no. They don't like me either. No, no, they must, they, who couldn't, who couldn't possibly like you? That's impossible. Oh, is it that, that whoever likes you wouldn't like me and whoever likes me wouldn't like you? Is that how it goes? I don't it's know. Like we're, te we're opposite team? I'm not sure. But uh, take the moment, like, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, tell a friend about us. Tell your mom, you know. Tell your mom about our, our live streams or, better yet, no, tell your mom about Slub and then better yet, tell her about these live streams and she can learn even more about raw denim and then she'll know how to properly co compliment you on the wonderful jeans that you're wearing mm -hmm. and the wonderful jeans that she shouldn't wash too prematurely maybe. <laughs> how many times have you heard the, oh no, my mom threw my jeans in the wash? I actually learned about how people don't wash their jeans sometimes from a Fabrice commercial. Really? When I was a young, yes. I need to, we need to hear this story. Oh, I mean, it's just that, like, I didn't know that people, you know, go about wearing clothes that they don't wash, right? Like, they don't, they, it's not like they, they're a dirty person, they're just choose not to wash clothes that they wear. I didn't know that, that concept when I was a kid. Well, I think the only, con that only really applies with, like, specifically is jeans. Like, it, you know, maybe a jacket. A jacket's not something you launder all the time. Yes. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah. talking about jeans, but, yeah. like, I, I didn't know that anybody did that. I, yeah, I, I don't think anyone here knew that until they heard about raw denim. No, well, Most I Most mean, people would just wear them once or twice and then put them in the wash. Like, that's what, no, like, yeah. normal people do. And then all of a sudden, we were all struck with the, no, no, no. Yeah. You can go longer. No, no, but as a society, like, we learned that there these people exist. When I was younger, I mm. didn't know that until I watched the Fabrice commercial mm. of, it's, it's like a, you know, I mean, it's a commercial for Fabrice, but, like, it was like, you know, like, the son, like a young son, and it's like, oh, mom, you're not supposed to wash your jeans, or something like that, oh, you know, really? and then it's like, and then she's like, he freaks out and she's just like, you know, I, I forgot how it goes. But at the end, she's like smiling in the sun, you know, hanging his <sighs> jeans and uh, fabricating oh, it. And I see. It was, you know. I didn't uh, wash them, but they're clean now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't smell. You know, I mean, it, it, it reminds me now of uh, there was an episode of Degrassi Junior High. We're going way back where uh, Joey Jeremiah's mom. 
uh, cut up Joey's denim jacket, and he uh-huh. wanted to wear it for picture day at school. Mm-hmm. And she's like, but I bought you a new denim jacket. He's like, yeah, but that one was already broken in. Yeah. And, like, the, you know, the scene is, like, mom is, like, cutting up the denim jacket to, like, you know, use the fabric for, like, patches or something. <laughs> and so he got all butthurt about it, and uh, he had to go and buy... <laughs> a denim jacket from another kid at school. He's like, oh, I have a, you need a jacket? I have got one I could sell you because, like, his was worn in and had patches and stuff and looked pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that was the child abuse episode. <laughs> that was the child abuse episode. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Joey got a jacket out of that whole situation. That's uh, nice. There was That was a very, you know, Degrassi, and, I mean, a lot of the shows that we watched when we were kids, they all had very special episodes. And, yeah, so mm. Joey... Uh, Joey was at the kid's house. Spo- you know what? Spoiler alert for those who haven't watched Degrassi Junior High from 1987. Um, uh, Is it really? Something like, like that. 80s? Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, Joey goes over. I, it was Rick. Rick's house. Man, my knowledge of Degrassi is pretty good. Which one's Rick again? Uh, he, I watched this entire yeah, yeah. thing also, by the way. Um, Rick was only in junior high. He, he didn't go to... He didn't make it into Degrassi okay. High. But... Uh, Pretty sure it was Rick. Anyhow, um, yeah, Joey goes over to his house, and uh, he gives Joey, like, a Coca-Cola. Dad comes home, and he's like, where are the sodas? And uh, that set Dad off. Uh. And he's like, yo, Joey, take the jacket, get out of here, because I'm about to catch a whipping. And uh, Uh anyhow, that's how that episode went. I won't tell you the end, but, you know, Mm. things... uh, Things may or may not have worked out for Rick. You will only find out if you will tune into Degrassi. <laughs> this the, the next week episode of Degrassi Junior High. Um, but yeah, oh, this, this is things I remembered about the pop, Fabrice. It was it was not a. It might have been started off as raw jeans, but it was not a raw jeans. Like, I didn't learn about raw then. Yeah. then it was a vintage jeans. Uh huh. No, yeah. It was a situ- similar situation in that. It was like I, like. It was just the idea that like he had this broken mm-hmm. in yeah, yeah. jacket, and, yeah. and uh, that's something special. You can't right. replace it with a new jean, right? Yeah, or jacket. Yeah, it it has to be worn yeah. in and used. Yeah, because new jeans were, I guess, lame. Yeah, it's uh, so not cool. Not, you know why <laughs> those jeans are? You know, that's that's what squares wore. Um, David Dixon, Febreze jeans. I can just imagine the smell. Yeah, I'm not a. I don't like the smell of Febreze. It there's something chemically smelling about that. Yeah, yeah. it's not like you're cleaning it. You're just masking the odor yeah. with another odor. Like yeah. it's not a great solution to that. Yeah, but I don't know how it works or like what it's supposed to do, but yeah, anytime I smell it, I, I just feel like there's I'm inhaling plastic. Like I just there's just, I feel yeah, like there's some some kind of chemical that's yeah. attaching to my lungs. Uh, when yeah. I when I smell it, I don't know. Uh, not for me. Um, Mark Lucier, Degrassi was so corny. Hey, hey, don't say <laughs> an unkind thing about Degrassi. It was wonderful. It's a Canadian uh, traditional. Uh, it's our tradi- traditional folk story. You know, you can't uh, you can't take anything away from Degrassi. One time, Risa and I um, went and visited the original Degrassi Junior High, mm-hmm. the school, Vincent Massey. Uh, I used to live, like, down the street from there when I was a kid, when Degrassi was still being shot. That was, that was my, my neighborhood in Etobicoke, Ontario. It was uh, before it became part of Toronto. So they were shot while you were living in the neighborhood. Have yeah. you ever seen them shoot it? I don't believe I did, but there was one episode where um, – they go to a uh, a cafe a restaurant. Uh, it was the episode where Joey takes Snake's parents' car for a joyride, and they ended up at a little cafe, and that was literally across the street from uh, where I lived. It was a it was a little restaurant called Arnold's. It doesn't exist anymore. It was torn down a long time ago. But uh, I remember seeing that and being like, "They're right there!" Like it was incredible. Uh, but yeah, I, like so when I watch that show, a lot of it like takes place in the Tobacco, and uh, it, it just you know I I remember those streets. I could, mm. it was just like how Toronto was when I was growing up. It was so exciting to see some 
some like neighborhood that like it's not a, like a you know a big set. yeah or yeah. like a big you know like Shibuya Crossing is on on TV every day like oh, you right. don't feel like you know you you have any attachment but I do remember when I was a kid like around our school it was very quiet residential neighborhood but there were like some areas where like a, a, you know somebody sh- shot like a very like popular like tv shows like opening or whatever oh and it was like so yeah. excited like we're all so excited about it it's like right. it's there and yeah. it's like yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty cool yeah it's a cool it's feeling kind of a weird yeah. feeling yeah uh junior rice i wish bayside would start a youtube channel dedicated to degrassi oh yeah we can do uh we can just start a podcast where me and you review every episode from we're, we're, someone who's seen every episode a thousand times versus one time. One time, I don't remember yeah. most of it. But I, I do enjoy the grassy too. I, I get the, I get the appeal. Yeah. Um. Uh. You know what I would like to own is that jacket from that episode. I would definitely frame it. Um. Also, at the end of every episode, there is like this denim theme that runs through the intro, and. Uh, you know, it starts off like you'll, you'll, there's always a, a pair of jeans that's very, um, pr- like prominently placed, hmm. whether it's jeans or a jean jacket. And uh, there was, uh, they had this pair of jeans with a red tab on the back and they wrote PWT. And PWT is playing with time, which is the, uh, the production company that made the show. But it was very much a Levi's tab that they wrote PWT on. And I'm like, I'm surprised that they, they never got sued over that. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe they weren't so... I mean, they weren't selling it, but it's still like, uh, it's such a... Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. don't know how uh, trademarks work, but yeah. Yeah. Maybe um, they weren't yeah. so into that. Red tabs on a jean right at the, like, giant on the screen. Anyways. Um, but, I mean, if you think about it, like, like, you know, they didn't really trademark red tabs in in japan because like they they were so late doing that right. and other brands already established that so it, it it probably means that they weren't so like you know maybe maybe in the 80s yeah, yeah. they were they were yeah. more relaxed about but yeah it. that's why for those people who don't know like if you if you find jeans in japan there's all kinds of companies that have little tabs like that is a hundred percent a levi's trademark like in the West, like you cannot make a pair of jeans that aren't Levi's with a red tab or even any color tab in that position uh, that that belongs to Levi's. Yeah. But in Japan, I guess what 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 the story goes is that when people first started making jeans here, they saw that detail as like 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 no like like belt loops or or rivets. Like that was just what was on jeans. So everybody made jeans with some kind of tab on it and because that was established before uh you know levi's came here and um registered that that they don't own that particular yeah. detail it's why you see yeah. a lot of japanese denim brands that has it and sell it with that tab in japan they're not supposed to do that in the west like yeah. if they export the, the jeans they shouldn't yeah, they shouldn't have that detail, but yeah. they're you, they're yeah. considered it, counterfeits. Yeah, but in Japan, yeah. you you're not in trouble for it. Yeah, you can't be in trouble for it. Right. Um, uh, Mike drop thirty seven writes Bayzad. Have you ever worn your Bayzad specials crotch blowout jeans? That's not what a Bayzad special is, by the way. But um, have you ever worn your crotch blowout jeans? That pair of left hand tools to the airport. Look TSA guy in the eye and say, "Go ahead, search me." Um, no. I have not. Uh, See, that's a weird like. Oh, if you were, if you were a pervert and you wanted to force someone to do that, you could. Like yeah, bo- but both I, ways, you could. Yeah, but also like what, like you know, I, let's assume that he he assumes that you're not that pervert, right? right? Like that's such a weird, weird thing. It's like, oh, it's so funny. Like you know, I let some random person who could be a pervert touch. Yeah, my... I don't know. You yeah. you know the weird thing so in weird thing. in retail is that you, especially in retail, you will always experience some kind of like shady individual. 
I remember, I remember one time when I was working at Diesel. So I was working in, in, in I was in the store, and uh, Buddy came in, and uh, on Diesel jeans, the sizing is on the back of the waistband. So they have usually like uh, some kind of, they'll have like a an iron-on patch kind of right over here, and it'll say like you know the waist size and the length, and it'll even say the fit, you know. And uh, so a guy came in and he's like. Uh, do you have these uh, in other colors? And I'm like, yeah, uh, no problem. Like I, I, from, I looked at it, I knew what fit he was talking about. And I'm like, what size do you need? And I probably shouldn't have asked that question because I, I could tell what size he was. But he's like, yeah, just, just check. And, uh, or I think, anyways, maybe I didn't even ask. Or maybe he's like, oh, can you check my size? I think that's what it was. I think he asked me to check what size he was. And I'm like, okay, let me see, because I knew where to look. And like, I'm gonna be honest with you, that wasn't that uncommon of a question. Some people would be like, you know, I need another pair, what's, I don't, I'm not, I don't remember what size I am, can you just, you know, because sometimes people didn't want to try anything on, they just wanted to buy it and go. So, Buddy is like, yeah, can you check my size? And so he undoes his belt, and like the jeans were a little bit loose on his waist, and like I pull the waistband, but he's fully commandoing. And I'm like, you mother effer. Like you did you 100 percent did that on purpose. Um Yeah, so that that was I that was a little offensive to me. Um I remember and then he bought like three pairs and threw his American Express black card at me. He threw it at me. He's like, here. And I'm like, you you effer. Um, anyhow, uh, what other ones did I have? I remember there's this one guy who was like, I think he was trying to, uh, drug me and take me to bed with him. Um, he definitely was trying to do that. Uh, he, I was working in ladies wear at this time and he would come in with this, his lady friend and they would shop and they would, they would spend like a lot of money. Um, and like he would come in every, you know, regularly. My G24 is asking what, what is commandoing. Commandoing is underwearless. He's not wearing anything. He's just free and fancy. Where does that word come from? I don't know. Why do we call it commando? I only know that from friends. I only commando. know that from yeah. friends too. Is that a friend's term? No, I think it's a real term. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, so Buddy would come in all the time and they'd shop and then he'd, he'd like take my picture. He, he's like, oh, yeah, let's take a picture. And, like, you know, he's just oddly taking pictures of me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I really didn't know how to deal with that situation. And then uh, at one point, I guess I had given him my phone number because uh, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, if I need anything, I'll give you a call and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, again, it's one of those weird situations where I'm like, I don't know. I didn't know what to do. And then and then he would like call me and text me. Oh, why don't you come over? Why, why don't you? Uh, oh, I'll come pick you up after work. And like, uh, I, I remember one time I was just like, I'm like, I'm just like, I'm really like, I don't know what, what to say to this guy. And uh, and uh, he was like, um, you know, I was getting off work. He's like, oh well, I'll come and pick you up. Uh, uh, like, uh, you know, I can be there soon. I'm like, no, no, I'm tired. He's like, I can give you something that. Uh, you know, won't will will make you not tired, and I'm like, what what the hell does that mean? And like, I show it to my friend who's like a coworker, and she's like, she's talking about cocaine. And I'm like, oh my god, like, I had no idea. Oh, that's that's <laughs> a good good better case scenario oh. than like you know. Rape, oh, yeah, then drugging me. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm like, anyhow, the guy I was. Would, I would have assumed that, I, I, to be honest. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyways, he didn't go. Anyways, after that, I I was very like cold with this person and i think they got the message but uh yeah retail can be weird you can certainly find all kinds of weirdos uh mm-hmm. in in that realm i mean there are weirdos everywhere i feel like you know weirdos men everywhere. are very like naive to that kind of idea until like somebody until some guy does it to them yeah. yeah like the chances of a female acting that way uh i'm just being misogynistic or Am I? What is it? No, no. But the, what what I mean but, is uh, that like if you are a, a girl, like you somehow grow up with this, like you know, just the oh, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, skeptic 
narcissism of random of you know, random people. men. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like I feel like sometimes men don't have that. Like you know, just they're like, what <laughs> yeah. is this a weird guy? Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a female friend who was like, he's trying to give you yeah. drugs, and I'm like, oh, that's. <laughs> I remember going to a work party <laughs> and just like coming into this hotel room and it was just debauchery everywhere and I'm like, huh? Like, they're like, yeah, it's a hotel room party and I'm like, and I brought potato chips. I brought chips. They're like, oh, they invited me to this party. <laughs> Very naive, young nice. Bayzad. Um, anyhow, uh, mom, I'm fine. If you're watching, I I never did anything bad. I'm, I've always been a good boy. Um, uh, anyhow, uh, dad sees Genesis. I've never purchased a naked and famous jacket. Uh, a Levi's XL fits me perfectly. Should I size up to double XL for a naked and famous denim jacket? Great question. And the answer to that question is always going to be follow the measurements because a Levi's XL doesn't mean diddly squat to me. And I'll tell you why, because they make a gajillion jackets and a gajillion fits, and some of them are slim fits, some of them are big. Vintage jackets fit smaller than modern jackets. Modern jackets can fit oversized, regular size, small. So the, the, the term XL and even your waist size, when you see a tag size 32, it doesn't matter. None of these things actually mean anything. There's no standard XL, there's no standard 32. So those ideas are, are just, social constructs. We just believe in them. But what is true, what is real, are measurements. So what you should do, uh, and, and this doesn't just apply to denim jackets, but it applies to everything that we make and that we sell. Let's go over to tatayandyoko.com and uh, let's explore how to buy a denim jacket. So uh, let's go over here. Let's go to jackets and uh, let's pick uh, Here we go the undyed Frankenstein for example. So if you have a uh, a Jacket what you should do whatever jacket you own and if say it fits you well Like you know, it's got the right amount of spacing on you. Uh, you know, it's comfortable to feel uh, to wear Measure it measure the shoulder to shoulder pit to pit sleeve length body length and now we do have a blog post here in the measurement guide that shows you what to do. Uh, and we have it on a shirt, but it, this, the same rules apply for our jackets. So you can see exactly how everything is measured. And so follow this guide and measure the jacket that you own and then compare those measurements here. So for example, if your XL jacket has a pit to pit measurement Let's just say it's exactly 24 and a half. Well, then that's where you should maybe be starting at. Say the shoulders of your jacket is 19 and a half. Well, 19 and a half, this is 20 and a half, but this has the pit to pit measurement that you're looking for. Well, one inch in the shoulders isn't going to make too much of a difference. So it's likely that this is going to be the jacket for you. So yeah. follow the measurements, measure the garment that you own. This is the same advice I would do for a pair of jeans. Of course, you would follow the jeans measurement guide for that. But for every product that we put up on Tate and Yoko, uh, you will find the measurement. So regardless if it's a denim jacket, chore coat, a zip chore coat, whatever it is, there's always measurements for it. Just follow the guide and you will find the right size every time. Yeah. And Sour Turtle um, comments, he... I, I've noticed some of your products, you don't include the sizing measurements for extra small, which makes it difficult to buy. If we do have an extra small in stock that you, it's, you, it's purchasable on the website and we were yeah. missing a, um, a measurement, yeah. just contact us. We'll, we'll give you the measurements. Yeah. Th that's an oversight. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. so this, it's not an intentional yeah, yeah. thing. Here's an example of an oversight, for example. We probably never made this jacket an extra small. Right. But, so if we don't have yeah. it, then we, we just yeah. don't have it. But. So when, when we create products in our back end, there's kind of like a template for it. 
and uh, you know, realistically, maybe we should delete the uh, the the sizes that we never made. Mm-hmm. But but yeah. the thing is, we make the styles in our back end long before the production comes. So maybe there was a production and uh, it called for a, a size, but in the end, maybe because there wasn't enough of that size sold, it just never got produced. So you know, in turn, these things never got changed out. You know. We, 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 we try, but sometimes it, it doesn't happen. But if you see, for example, the extra small is in stock and you don't see it here, like Risa said, give us a call, give us an email, we'll get that measured up for you and then we'll update the chart, we'll send you that information as well. But if it's not there, it's more than likely the case that we just never made it. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it was a size that was not uh, yeah. available for sale. Um, okay. Well, there you go. Um, Guys, we are coming to that time of the show. And that time is snack time. And you guys know what we're doing this week. For uh, longtime viewers of this show, and that really only requires you to have tuned in last week, you know what's coming because we've got a special Coca-Cola to try out. I've been waiting to try this out because we've had this in the fridge for a little while, and since then, I've been offered this by other people to try. They're like, oh, I just bought this for you because I thought you would like it. And I'm like, no, can't try it yet because we're going to try it live for our live stream audience. We know that you guys want to see us enjoy the finest products in the world. And so we've tried some disgusting drinks recently with uh, buttermilk, like literally butter-flavored milk. Um, that was gross. Um, we tried oh, by the pot- sweet potato milk. That was yeah. less gross. Yeah, and pancake tea. Yeah, pancake milk tea. Yeah, pan- So now we have the Coca Cola K Wave, K for Korea. Yeah. So this is maybe inspired by Korean uh, pop music. Got some Korean words. Yeah. The, it doesn't say anywhere Korea other than it has some Korean letters on it. Yeah, and it says K wave. So K-wave. I would only yeah. assume it means Korea. But as far as the, f- the flavor, it says fruity fantasy flavored. So um, I guess that's what that's Coca Cola thinks of Korea. So there South you go. Korea. So we're going to try it out. We're going to pour it here in our fancy. Coops. And I, w- I wonder if this is like, um, this is the Korean local Coke. Like, I th- doubt it. I think this is one of their like r- random limited flavors. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Anyways, um, yes, this is my favorite uh, thrift find of all times, I think. It, it was a dollar right. each. Oh, all right. Owen writes, what about Japanese word of the day? Oh, uh... Samui. <laughs> because it is currently Samui in Japan, and this Coca-Cola is also Samui. No, that's incorrect. So this is a, a perfect opportunity to learn about Japanese. Samui means cold. Um, oh, this is Sumatai. It, it's more like a temperature being cold. I, I feel cold. Mm. Um, your, your feeling of cold is Samui. Uh, whereas this one, as you, you correctly corrected, um, tsumetai. When a thing is cold, you're not feeling it. It's just a cold thing. It's tsumetai. So it's a, two different words. There you go. I'm learning as you are all learning. <laughs> so hopefully I will be um, less illiterate in this society one day. All right, let me pour your drink, madame. Yeah. All right. Merci, merci. Ooh. All right. I usually use a clear cup so you can see the color, but we all know the color of Coke. Coca-Cola. And it's exactly the same color and, and, as any other Coke. And this is a Coke Zero. There is a pair. I've not seen a not Coke Zero version of this in the store. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Korean pop stores don't drink anything with right, calories. Right, they don't have in calories them. in it. Um, okay. Um, let's do it. That's what it looks like, you guys know. It smells fruity. Oh, it smells like a candy. Yeah. It doesn't smell like Coke. It smells fruity. All right. Hmm. Okay. Well, 
It has the co the classic Coca Cola bite. Like it's a sharp carbonation. Doesn't taste like Coke though. Like I would if I were to drink this, I'd be like, it has the bite of a Coke, but I would not ever. Hmm. It tastes like. It tastes. I hate, I hate to say it. I don't even know if I hate to say it. It does taste fruity flavored. Fantasy, I don't know, I don't know about fruity fantasy flavored, okay. but it's certainly fruity. Um, I can't put my nose on it. It's okay. Finger. Why would I so, put my nose on it? Why would I put my so finger on it? The, you know the snack, like ramenes snacks? Mm. Not the ramenes the drink, but ramenes the snacks. The powdery, like powdered candy uh -huh. like a powdered heart collection of powder mm -hmm. like condensed powder candy those things smells like this mm. the smell yeah. is the same and it it's, has a similar taste with the yeah, back yeah. like we with the watered coke in the background yeah it's a uh, it's a tough one it's the tough one to pinpoint now the question is do i like it i don't dislike it it is it is, uh, to me, I guess, like all like zero calorie Coke products, they're not what I want. I want a real Coke, but what I should not have all the time is real Coke because that is full of uh, it's full of calories, a lot of them, a lot of sugar. Now you can enjoy them every now and then. That's fine, but um, in lieu, sometimes you know you 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 want the the the. You want the Coke feeling, so you go, you go for the Coke Zero. Uh, as a man, you go for the Coke Zero. As a woman, often Diet Coke. I don't know why it is like that, but it just happens to be that way. I think they've engineered Coke Zero for men. Um, there, another fun fact, there's no Diet Coke in Japan. Mm -hmm. But there's we no, have a different kind of Coke. Oh yeah, there's like other... a dietary Coke. <laughs> yeah. not, I would say dietary, but yeah. it's it it is. I think, I think it is like kind of like Coke Zero, like no, no, no calorie, calorie. Yeah, no, no but it's supposed sugar. to like. Um, it helps you, like it, in Japan. There's a lot of uh, like drinks that has this uh, stamp of like it. Actually, apparently, it's very hard to get. Uh, it is like that has to like help you not absorb fat or yeah. sugar too much into your stomach like it's supposed to be like healthier drink like yeah. a lot of like green tea has this because i think you know it's easier to make that product to like meet that standard with like with um with green tea apparently but but now like they have that yeah. coke yeah. version. it's like a it. white bottle coke yeah. Yeah. So it looks like a Diet Coke. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. I, I guess it tastes different. I, I, don't, I, I, I'm, I don't. I'm not I don't a know. Coke person. Uh, it, to be fair, like I kind of regret not tasting real Coke before this. Yeah. It's been years since I had Coke. So. Really? No. This tastes nothing like real Coke. This, I wouldn't say it's reminiscent in terms of the carbonation. The flavor <laughs> is. It does have that like the the Coke smell like. A, no, a little it's, it's essence. It has Coke yeah. Zero essence in there. Like a background there. Coke. Yeah, that's Coke Zero for you. Um, where am I going to put this? I'm putting this at a... Ooh, uh, I would put Coke Zero at a 7. Okay. Uh, I would put this at a 6.8. That's not yeah, bad. Yeah, because it's not bad. If I were to be given this, I'd be like, yeah, it's okay. But right? you can tell the difference between this and the Coke Zero. Oh, yeah, easily. Mm. Very easily. Um, Coke Zero is a fine drink. It's not my favorite, but I drink it because I, you know, I just want the taste of Coke a little bit. Um, uh, and this, you know, it's not my favorite flavored Coke I've ever had. Cherry Coke is number one. Vanilla Coke is also number one. Wait. Cherry. Cherry Coke and Vanilla Coke over regular Coke? Yeah. Mm. Cherry and Vanilla Coke are amazing. Incredible. I love them. I love them so much. Um, I'm a big, big fan of both of those I've products. I've never had Vanilla Coke. I feel oh, like yeah. I've tasted Vanilla Coke cherry. was, when that came out, I was 
I was over the moon. I could not believe <laughs> that this I had never. Uh, I was in like the end of high school when I discovered. I think it just came out when I mean you know in in bottles. I never had it before. I bought it and I was I, I was drinking them every day. I just I, I I had to have that every day. It was the best. I didn't really get that. Well, like. When we were living in Canada, yeah. Coke had like a cherry Coke. You could buy cherry oh, Cokes. Yeah. Coke? Like in They're, a smaller bottle. Like they did like artisanal yeah. like packaging. Right. You and didn't like that as much. No. A cherry Coke is great. I just, I could not drink. Like if I brought a, a, a case of 12 at home, I'd be through it in like three days. <laughs> like I just couldn't bring it home. Cause, wow, so, people like vanilla yeah, Coke. Yeah, vanilla Coke is great. Vanilla Dr. Pepper is good, too. Yeah, cherry vanilla Coke is goaded. Everyone, it's great. Wow, this um, is weird. Okay, so uh, that said, not a negative taste. Not the greatest. It's fine. I would try it. If it was there, maybe I'd buy it, you know. It feels like a girly taste. Definitely feels like a girl. It feels taste. like you know, like a unicorn snack. Yeah, this is maybe for the ladies who like K-pop, <laughs> who want to get closer to their favorite uh, boy band. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's fine. It's it's fine. Try it if you see it. I w I wouldn't write home about it, but I've certainly spent a lot more time on this uh, review uh, than other drinks. Mostly probably because I like Coke, and so I have some opinions on it. Uh, anyhow. Uh, Rice W5 writes, I like raspberry Coke. In Canada, they have like a, at the grocery store every now and then, they have like maple syrup one, maple syrup Coke. And, uh, oh, that's what I was thinking yeah. of, I think. It's just like a smaller bottle with the hand written. It was, a, like it was a, a taller, skinny oh. bottle, mm. and it would come in like a pack of four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. And they had and like, like a, a peach, a bl peach or, like... or a blueberry one or something like that. But they had like these Canadian flavored ones. Oh, those were Canadian yeah. flavored. Yeah. Okay. I mean, maple syrup is. Right. But, I mean, raspberry. Yeah, there was like British Columbia blueberry or something like that. It was, mm. it was, it was something like that. Um,. Soul turtle, same. I completely cut out sugar. Yeah, I'm not completely out, but for me, a sugar drink is a it's a, a it's a treat. I don't I, I don't I don't consume them every day. It's uh, it's something I, I maybe once a week I'll have a, a soda like that. But uh, yeah, I gotta I gotta be careful because I put on weight fast. Um, uh, the Raven writes, when I was 14, I could drink between 7 to 12 cans of cherry Coke a day. <laughs> they just to say, I no longer drink soda like I used to. No question about it. 12 I, cans? I, I could, 12 is a lot, but like I would always have a bottle of soda on me. Like if I was in class, I had a bottle with me. If I would, after school, I'd have a bottle. At work, I'd, on my break, I'd go get a bottle of soda. How are like, you not constantly burping? I probably was. <laughs> I probably was. But, uh, you know, like an orange crush, like I'd always have a bottle of that. Like, uh, I'd, I'd all, yeah. I, I, and I'm assuming it's not one of those baby <sighs> cans. Where... No, no, like a regular can. Oh. But but I, I would usually have it in the bottle because, like, uh, you know, I'd work on it throughout the day. <laughs> yeah. That's a uh, lot of carbonation. That's, yeah. I would be. <laughs> yeah. David Dixon, Coke stock price must have plummeted after you cut back, maybe a little bit, <laughs> maybe a little bit. I I do I I I do drink um, Coke Zeros every now and then, but uh, but yeah, the full the full flavored Coke is is a special occasion, and and you know, it's so much of a special occasion for me that I prefer to go and spend a little bit more and get the glass bottle ones. Um, so I have like three or four of those in the fridge right now, mm -hmm. and they're just. They're there. It's like you know. It's like a fancy bottle of wine. It's like all right, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have a nice evening nice tonight. Night, I'm gonna yeah. have a Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Wow, it's important to have something like that in your life. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Last comment for the day. Helios writes. There's a video out there of a lady saying she would drink a Coke and then a Coke Zero because she thought it would cancel out. No, it would have to be a Coke negative one, <laughs> yeah. right? And then, yes. then you'd and then achieve they, zero. Yeah. yeah, but zero plus one 
Mm-hmm. It's still one. Although I wonder if those like specially marked coke is is has its negative effect. Mm. I don't think so. I don't think so, Tim. With all that said, everybody, it's been a pleasure as usual. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Naked and Famous Denim live stream, the greatest live stream in the history of all live streams in the entire universe and all sub universes out there. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you again next Friday right here on the live stream. Watch out for videos this weekend. We've got, uh, I think I have a fade review lined up. I got to see uh, what I have. Uh, uh, what I have. I, I think I have to put a video together for that. And then uh, on Monday, we will release a video for the Matcha Salvage, which is going to be coming out next Friday, March 29th. Oh, also, the Classic and the Arrow. Uh, left hand tool sky blue edition so the ladies version of the left hand tool sky blue edition if you've been waiting for that that's coming out next Friday as well so a double release next Friday matcha and the ladies left hand tool so that will be rinsed that's it Uh, we'll see you guys next week have a uh, nice weekend do something nice for yourself maybe have a coke and uh, do something nice for somebody else so we'll see you next time bye everyone bye everyone (laughs) 